आई सेल्फ पीयूषा शेडगर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड टेलीकम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन टूडे सेशन विल सी दैट हाउ टू मेजर फेस शिफ्ट एंड वी एस डब्ल्यू आर ऑफ द माइक्रोवेव सिग्नल दीज आर द लर्निंग आउटकम एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू मेजर फेस शिफ्ट एंड द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू मेजर द वी एस डब्ल्यू आर ऑफ माइक्रोवेव सिग्नल दीज आर द कंटेंट्स नो बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टूडे सेशन वी कैन पॉज वीडियो हियर फॉर अ सेकेंड एंड रिकॉल दैट वॉट इज द रेंज ऑफ फ्रिक्वेंसी फॉर माइक्रोवेव सिग्नल Yes the microwave signal is the very high frequency signal the range of this frequencies can be start with the 1 gigahertz and ending with the thousands of gigahertz so you know that gigahertz is nothing but 10 raised to 9 hertz is nothing but the gigahertz with respective wavelengths of 30 to 0.03 cm that is you know that frequency and wavelengths are inversely proportional to each other so when high frequency is consider in that case you are getting the very low value of the wavelength in terms of the micrometer therefore this type of the waves are called as micro waves now let us discuss the first point that is measurement of the phase shift so in practical working uh, conditions there might occur the phase change in the signal from the actual signal so while performing the practical there may be the possibility of the phase shifting due to the minimum and maximum value calculation and uh, the impedance will be considered to measure such a sh phase shift we can use the comparison technique by which we can calibrate the phase shift now this is the setup for measurement of the phase shift so here the microwave source is connected after that it is given to the h plane t h plane t is the uh, three plane uh, three port device three port uh, which having the one port is uh, given to the microwave source other port is given to the attenuator and the second port third port is also connected to the attenuator but here from the attenuator the port 2 uh, is connected to the block which having the network whose phase shift is to be measured and in the second block calibrated precision phase shifter is used now the h plane t can be used to uh, reconnect the signal by adding the two port signal or it is also used to split the signal so by using this property of the h plane t we can connect the output of this network whose phase shift is to be measure, measured and the calibrated precision phase shifter output these two are added here and at the output of h plane t you getting whatever is the signal output signal is in phase and it is given to the slotted line section of the microwave bench after the slotted line section one of the port is terminated by using the matched termination and the other port is given to the output uh, and that output can be observed on cro by using crystal detector so this is the microwave source generate the signal which can be passed towards the h plane t junction and the demodulated output is a 1 kilohertz sine wave which can be observed on cro this phase shifter is adjusted such that its output of 1 kilohertz sine wave also matches with the above signal and after the matching is done by observing in the dual mode cro this phase shifter gives us the reading of phase shift so if the previous wave and the uh, current wave uh, if you are comparing these two wave there may be some phase shift will be observed and this can be measured so the due to the first path you can observe these two sine waves are there so due to the first path you getting this uh, sinusoidal waveform and uh, due to the second path 
this sinusoidal waveform will be observed. So, if you observe that this wave is previously started and some uh, after some time the second wave will start due to the second path. So, here there will be observed the phase shift between these two waves which is denoted with the phi. Phi is nothing but the phase shift. This wave can be observed on CRO. Now, next parameter measurement of the VSWR. VSWR is nothing but voltage standing wave ratio. So, voltage standing wave ratio, what is the standing wave ratio? So, standing wave is nothing but in the waveguide if the microwave signal is passing from source to the load side. At the load side, if the impedance does not match, that is when characteristics impedance is not matches with the load impedance in that case the wave will be uh, generates the pattern like a standing pattern of the wave will be observed in waveguide that is it just uh, remains there only uh, it just uh, travels back and forth inside the walls of the waveguide and forms the uh, standing pattern of the wave. This is called as a standing wave. So, if you are taking the ratio of maximum value of the voltage to the minimum value of the voltage, we can find out the voltage standing wave ratio. So, strength of these standing waves can be measured in terms of VSWR. So, the ratio of maximum to the minimum voltage gives the VSWR which can be also denoted with the S letter. S can be written as V max by V min. In terms of reflection coefficient, it can be written as 1 plus rho upon 1 minus rho where rho is the reflection coefficient. Reflection coefficient gives the value of how much amount of the wave is reflected back out of the total incident wave. It can be denoted with the letter rho. This is nothing but the reflection coefficient. So, in terms of reflection coefficient, we can get the equation for standing wave ratio is 1 plus rho upon 1 minus rho. So, again the VSWR can be done in two ways. Uh, for the value of VSWR which is less for that the measurement is different and for the VSWR value is high for that the measurement is different. So, let us consider first the v S having the uh, value is less than 10 that is how to measure the low VSWR. So, this can be done by just adjusting the attenuator to get a reading on a DC milli volt meter which can be considered as the VSWR meter. Now, the reading can be taken by adjusting the slotted line section and the attenuator in such a way that the DC milli volt meter shows the full scale reading as well as the minimum reading. So, by adjusting just the slotted line section you can get these two values and these two readings are calculated to find out the VSWR of the network. So, by adjusting this slotted line you are getting the two positions on the scale such that you can observe the maximum value of the wave as well as the minimum value of the wave on CRO. Now, you can take the ratio of V max value that is maximum value of the voltage to the minimum value of the voltage to calculate the voltage standing wave ratio that is VSWR can be find out V max by V min. Now, let us consider the measurement of the high VSWR value that is when S is considered greater than 10 value. The measurement of high VSWR can be measured by the method known as the double minima method. Here also if you observe that slotted line section in that you can consider the slotted line section uh, scale such that you are, you are observing the two minimum values on CRO. So, these two minimum values can be taken as half power point of minimum value. Okay. 
Now, if you observe this waveform, here you are getting this is the wave which having these two values at the minimum value. So, D1 at D1 and D2 you are getting the minimum of the signal. So, twice of minimum power points can be considered here with the V minimum value. Now, this VSWR can be calculated by getting the relation such as VSWR is lambda G by pi D2 minus D1. D2 is the first minima, D2 is the distance where the first minima is observed. D1 is one of the distance where the second minima will observed. Lambda G is the guide wavelength. Lambda G is the guided wavelength which can be calculated by lambda 0 upon under root 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda C bracket square where lambda 0 is the free space wavelength which can be calculated by C by F. As the two minimum points are being considered here this is called as a double minimum method. Now let us uh, learn about the measurement of the impedance in the next session. So, uh, lambda g is calculated here by using this formula where lambda c is calculated by twice of a, where a is the wider dimension of the waveguide and it is fixed, it having the fixed value equal to 22.8 mm. So, by putting these values, all values, you can easily find out the lambda g and lambda g value can be put in this equation to find out the VSWR, thus the VSWR can be measured. These are the references used for today's session. Thank you.